Hello guys and welcome back to Respawn Gaming. Uh, today a bit of different video. Um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about Sea of Thieves. I know that's a game I didn't show anywhere on my channel till now. Um, but I was playing it recently and I noticed a lot of new players with a lot of questions. And I thought let's do a video about that. So... Yeah, I'm used to play with multiplayers and also play solo, so I was actually doing this for new players and uh, there will be some tips for solo players in between. Most of those tips uh, all users can use, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, well, one of the first things when you spawn in, as you can see over here, what I'm doing at the moment also, is um, go through the outpost you spawned and try to collect as many as um, foods and planks and cannonballs as you can because on the seas it can be hard to find new loot and well yeah by collecting items in the outpost directly you have already a good starting base okay guys second one is most important for when for everyone uh, put always cannonballs in your cannons Make sure you have some planks and some cannonballs in your pockets when sailing. When you get near an island, always empty your pockets so you can uh, go on the island and collect some extra stuff for yourself. As third, one of the most important things is to have your ship always battle ready. Uh, always look around just to know if there are ships nearby, but it can always happen a megalodon, a skelly ship coming from down, uh, I don't know. Just make sure your ship is ready. Always have cannonballs in your cannons, have a little bit of cannonballs in your pockets, and some planks that when you get surprised by anything, you're always ready to counter the attack. Okay, well, next one is, and I know it's not possible for everyone, but this game is way more fun to play with friends. Uh, in my opinion, there are some awesome moments solo, especially when you're sailing solo, other crews were, are more friendly towards you. Um, but when you're sailing with the bigger ships, your quests go quicker, you have, in my opinion, more fun. But solo slooping is uh, one of the things I also really enjoy. Next up is a bit weird one. Um, I need to show this myself at the moment, because I have no enemies nearby. But uh, when your mast get hits by a chain ball, it will collapse. You can catch it by instantly going to the mast and pull it back up. It's back in place. Just put one plank on it. And you are ready to go. This will really help you during fights to make sure you're not standing still anywhere. Because then you're just a very easy target. Make sure your ship is always and always sailing. As, except when you can put your ship next to one of your enemy ships without them being able to hit you. Uh, the other thing with uh, masts is you only have to place one plank on them to make sure you can put your sails back down. After that try to repair the mast with all three planks to make sure um, when it's hit with a normal cannonball or something it doesn't go down instantly again. Okay guys, so next up is um, always and always, especially when you just left port, uh, I mean when your ship is full of cargo, I cannot recommend this, um, but make sure you always enter fights, especially with skelly ships, just practice your aim, practice your shooting, um, most of the, especially NPC fights, you will also get more cannonballs in return than you used, even when you're shooting bad. Um, just make sure you try to practice your shots and not only with normal cannonballs, but also chain balls. Chain balls can really change the course of a battle. Just make sure to use chain balls as much as possible uh, and try to learn how to shoot with them. Uh, one small tip is try to aim for the Krauss mast. That's the biggest target there is for a mast. Uh, if you manage to hit that, uh, it, the mast will also collapse. So. Uh, I think that's one of the best uh, parts to hit it. And yeah, just keep practicing. That's the only way you get better at shooting. Okay, then another one for solo fighters. And it, I think it's also one for larger ships, but it's, it's more focused on solo fighters. What are your priorities during a fight? I had multiple fights with uh, uh, Virgin teams and also other sloops with one or two players. You have, need to have your priorities. It's not that you can 
just fight, just sail and shoot. You need to know what you have to do to make sure your ship keeps afloat. Uh, well, one of the most important parts is, and it depends on the situation, but make sure you're never standing still. Always, when your mast is down, that's priority number one. Get it back up, sails up, and uh, sails, sails down, and keep going. Oh, well, Second well, one, keep um, on. always keep an eye on where you're going, especially when you're turning. Uh, make sure you're not hitting anything. First off, take you t your ship takes damage. Second off, your ship is laying still in the water and is an easy target for the enemy. Next up is, I guess, the uh, shooting. Shooting is very important during a fight. Shooting at any ship, but make sure at least one of the crew, crew members, members needs to fix something on their ship. So just shoot whenever you can. This is your next priority. When you are sailing safely and you're moving and you have the opportunity to shoot, always shoot first. Except when you have taken heavy well, damage and your ship is almost underwater, then first start scooping, but just Try to damage the enemy ship as much as possible to make sure they have something to do and can't just only focus on shooting at you. Well, next up is then, I guess, the um, making sure your ship keeps afloat, uh, repair any holes, uh, make sure the water isn't too high. When the water is getting yeah. high, just start scooping. Yeah, I hope for you, you don't didn't take that much damage and you can make sure um, the ship is fully repaired and empty again. And then last up is steering. Steering is very important, but when you start to learn a little bit about uh, how the enemy is sailing, um, I often can put my ship in a slight curve, like uh, one or two um, clicks this way. Caps uh, curve three, I mean. Um, and then your ship well, just well. keeps rotating around the enemy ship. They are having more following <laughs> you and you keep rotating and making sure you can oh. shoot the enemy so often i can just put the stair like this uh just keep an eye out for where you're going and you should be fine with steering and well that is i think all the priorities you have and i must say just whenever you enter a fight you will notice some pros and cons about this order and you will definitely adjust it to the situation and that's something about fights you just have to learn what your next priority should be and this can be different in each situation okay next up is down here in a cargo hold in each ship uh, you can have multiple holes and one of the biggest things about that is um, over uh, the holes can have different sizes Small, medium, and large. Small is mostly only when you uh, hit uh, an island or, for, or something. Um, and medium is from cannonballs. Large is if you get hit two times at the same spot. Larger holes also take more time to repair, but put in the most water of all holes. Next up, gunpowder kegs. And I must say, new players really like to use them and I also still really like to use gunpowder kegs, but I want to discourage you guys. It is not safe to use. It's uh, whenever you have a gunpowder keg on your ship and anything hits your ship, maybe it's a megalodon, maybe it's a player, maybe it's, I don't know, you get hit. You always, always know for one thing for sure, especially on sloops, um, you're most likely gonna sink. And yes, you can use your gunpowder kegs very very good against uh, other players but just make sure you have maybe one on your ship I often keep one in the back over here and the moment any encounter starts I throw it overboard just forget about it you don't want to get hit at the gunpowder kegs location then your ship is instantly gone so yes you can keep one on your ship uh, most people keep them in their mast. Um, that's also one of the reasons why shooting chain balls at the mast is very strong. If there's a gunpowder keg, it's also going to explode. Um, I usually keep it at the back of my ship. Um, at the point I can just easily throw it over uh, overboard. But don't keep them um, on locations you can't reach quickly. And whenever you enter any combat, throw them overboard, please. That's going to save you a lot of gold. Next up is positioning of your ship, and um, as you can see at the moment, I'm docked at an island, 
And um, whenever an I see an enemy, I can go on my ship, start instantly sailing straight forward, and I'm gone. Uh, next up, the anchor is up. I don't have to put my anchor up. I only have to lower the sails and I start sailing. Uh, these are both tips, uh, very handy, um, because especially on the larger ships, when you have your anchors down, and you need to get them up uh, for because a fight is starting. You're not gonna make it in time. I'm gonna tell you that it's uh, you're already gonna get shot. And if I see a ship, I just go to my ship, lower the sails, and I'm already sailing. Also, never position your ship towards the island or in a bay or anything like that. You're then instantly trapped. You need to steer around, turn your ship. I don't know, but put them always away from the island. Towards open seas, sails up, anchors up, and then you're well, you can escape as very quickly. I don't say it's gonna save you every time, but it's gonna save you more often than when you have your anchors down and your sails out. Another little trick um, is when you are sailing and you're getting followed by a ship, or you're thinking you're gonna get start followed by a ship, uh, each ship has a best direction to sail when you want to flee or follow someone and they're going that direction the sloop is the fastest ship against the wind just put your sail like this straight against the wind start sailing against and uh, especially the galleon is very slow at that moment so you will outrun them pretty fast uh, also make sure when you're getting followed never to sail into any corners of the map Just make sure you have an escape route uh, or two that they can't cut you off You cut your route or anything like that. Well, the Burgentine is the second one It's the fastest with the wind from the side and the sails um, In the same way I believe and the galleon is the fastest with the wind So never when you're on a sloop go with the wind to escape a galleon it it won't work, it will catch up to you very quickly and you have to fight. Well then there's a couple more. The next one is um, listen to your ship always, especially when you're in a storm you can hear the sound very well. Your ship makes like a, a, a strange uh, crying noise, crying wood uh, noise. Um, make sure when you hear that check your cargo hold in here most of the times the water is pretty high already and the ship is about to sink or re going really fast towards sinking um so it's just your ship telling you it needs some help to uh, to get emptied before because else it will sink so you yeah, start listening to the sh to your ship and the sounds it make whenever you hear something strange um you know what's up and also um when you hear a uh, change in music, um, I'm not gonna tell you how they sound because you can experience that for yourself and learn about it for yourself. But each event and each encounter has different music, so you can already uh, distinguish which encounter is happening uh, when you hear the music starting. So just watch, watch out for that, and you will, uh, I think, fairly quickly know what's happening. Then uh, one thing about quests, you have two different types of quest uh, types. Um, you have the Ashen part of the map, the Devil's Roar, and the normal part. In the Devil's Roar, your loot is higher, but the risk is higher because there are natural uh, um, hazards in that part of the world. Um, I'm not going to spoil what it is, but watch out when you... Uh, Accept a quest with a red lining. It means you're going most likely in that area, and well, you have to watch out for more things than only ships. But whenever you sell anything that is coming from the Devil's Roar, it is also more uh, more gold for you. So it's a high risk, high reward kind of uh, thing, and you must decide for yourself if you think it's worth it or not. But just so you know, there are quests that give you more. And that's also, you get always the items with the glowing orange parts on them from the Ashen Quests. And at number 15, the last tip I have for you guys. 
play this game, have fun with it. Don't get angry because your ship sank. I mean, it's it's some gold you lost. Um, gold isn't everything in this game. It's fun to have. It's nice to have. You can change your ship styles and that kind of stuff. But just make sure you're just having fun. I mean, that's what games are for, isn't it? Just to have fun with each other or on yourself. And maybe try to make friends or have a fun fight with an enemy. And if you lose some gold, well, accept it, I would say, and try to collect the new ones, or maybe try to get revenge, but don't get mad at the game. It's 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 an amazing game. It's a, a sen <clears throat> it's a sandbox game, nothing else, so just accept anything can happen at any moment, and yes, your ship will sink multiple times when you're playing Sea of Thieves, and sometimes it's empty, sometimes it's full of cargo, but just accept it, it it will happen and the only thing i can say to prevent sinking and losing lots of gold is go to outposts more often if you really uh, don't want to lose any of your gold and uh, yeah with that i would really say thank you guys for watching again i hope you guys are really gonna enjoy sea of thieves i know i did and i'm still doing uh, and i'm still enjoying it so yeah Good luck on the high seas and you know it, gamers don't die, they respawn. <laughs>